Welcome to the Mindset RX podcast. My name is Tom Foxley, and I and Mindset RX as a whole aim to give you the champs mindset. So, functional athletes a, ga- a champs a gamps mindset a champs mindset. Anyway, whilst you're listening to this, I am currently away sunning myself in some mountains in Montenegro, and I thought yeah, I'd bring you a couple of past episodes or four past episodes. This is the third one of four, and it's with uh, CrossFit Games legend again uh, after Chris Spieler and Chris Moore. This one is Brent Fakowski. Brent is uh, the person who probably embodies the concept of mindset at the highest level best. So enjoy this complete dissection of of my work or with uh, this podcast with with Brent Fikowski and it's a really fantastic episode so much so that I wrote an article about it which you can find at mindsetrx.com so mindset romeo x-ray delta dot com slash blog slash the prof and enjoy the show so at this point man I'd just like to say welcome to the show how are you doing today yeah good thank you yeah I had a had a good evening last night went for a float and uh Woke up pretty early this morning with the sun and um, yeah, ready to attack a, attack a big day and I got a big weekend ahead of me. So yeah, feeling good. Nice. And um, that's like two huge subjects straight, straight away that I wasn't planning on talking about. How, how'd you get in floating? How did I? You know, I'm not really sure. I think, um, I think a float tank, uh, float space in Kelowna here opened up uh, pretty close to our gym. And I think I just went to check it out. You know, I don't really remember. Um, and then turns out, you know, I went one or two times and started talking with the owner and we realized we knew each other. We used to play volleyball against each other in high school. I kind of recognized him and couldn't really put my finger on where. And so he kind of knew a few people I knew and we probably played against each other maybe three or four times. Um, never probably exchanged words, but, you know, played against each other. And, um, and yeah, we've just, we've been pretty good friends ever since. And I go, I'd say regularly, uh, that, that fluctuates. I try to make it in every, I think an ideal situation, it'd be nice to go like once a week. I probably on average go every, like maybe twice a month, maybe. Um, but that, that fluctuates depending on how busy I am. Yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Um, are you using it for a particular purpose? Are you using it for kind of just a time to chill out or are you using it for visualization purposes? Or? A little bit of everything. Uh, it sort of depends on the time of year. Definitely this time of year, I've got a big competition coming up. So I do try to visualize in there and just really uh, take state of where I am mentally so that uh, when I go into competition, I'm, I'm in a mental state that I want to be in, which is one of, uh, you know, happiness and relaxation and confidence. And then, but while I'm in there around this time of year, I try to uh, spend some time visualizing the events I'm going to do. So you know, everything from how I'm going to warm up to how I'm going to enter, you know, the competition floor and then how I'm going to break everything up and, you know, just sort of visualize it. So by the time I go up there, hopefully I can, uh, I can be very comfortable with what, what to expect. And then if something new does happen, I have this sort of, uh, the space in my brain to react to that accordingly because everything else is sort of going to plan. And, uh, yeah, I'm just like very, very ready and comfortable. So like the, the people that I deal with, whether they're CrossFit athletes at like a, a, a national or a region, um, like a local level or a higher level, we use visualization in different methods or different ways. And sometimes we, we work on like what could go wrong and how to kind of mm. overcome it. And a lot of the time though, it's reingraining or reinforcing the, the perfect outcome. Which side of that do you fall on or is it, is it a kind of a mixture of both? I'd say a bit of both. Um, for preparing for regionals, um, the, uh, uh, the variables are a lot lower. So I mostly just focus on the perfect outcome, uh, focus on exactly, you know, my strategy, exactly how I want to, you know, pace things, break things up. And that's, that's what I spend most of my time on. Um, I find that if I can go into a weekend, you know, with every event sort of planned out with a good plan, something I'm like, you know, I know front to back, but then also go in with like a very open uh, mindset just in general. Then if something does come up, I can usually handle it. Um, On the flip side, going into the CrossFit games, I did do quite a bit of mental mental visualization on all the things that might go wrong and how I would handle those because, you know, it's, you're going into a five day event with no idea really what you're doing. Uh, it was a brand new venue for me. I was competing against people I'd never competed against in a different city. Uh, there's just all these things that were going to be unfamiliar for me. And it turned out to be a pretty crazy weekend. Like the first day on Tuesday, they said, 
all right, we'll see you back here at, I think it was like 3 a.m. So we had to, we had like a really short night's sleep. Then they put us on a plane and we went, you know, took an hour plane ride to this other location where we did this like trail run. And so it was very unexpected. A lot of variables, you know, I didn't have all the food I prepared and all the, you know, I'm like, you know, my, my fiance wasn't there and all these people weren't there that I was kind of expecting to be with me. So, you know, I, I had sort of planned for maybe not that specific situation, but maybe situations that were even less favorable than that. Mm. So to be sort of, sort of have gone through in my mind that I could be ready for anything was a part of my preparation. Yeah. And I heard you talking about the, the ranch run actually. Um, and like, I remember watching it just going, that looks fucking horrendous. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I watched it and like, that was, that was a brutal test. And, um, and I was watching a video uh, a couple of days ago, of you, you talking about it and getting to that point where you thought, right, if it finished now, I'd be done. And then you gave that bit more at that point. Yeah. What, what was going through your mind? Do you remember? Man, that was rough. So um, for those, anyone listening that didn't know, basically the very first event of the CrossFit Games was a seven kilometer trail run. Um, and it was very much a trail. There was gradients of 45 degrees up, 45 degrees down. You were kind of walking on some rocks and kind of like a long stream and like, just, you know, gravel road, all these different, different terrain. Uh, and then there was 80 people on the co- course in total, 40 men and 40 women all racing first event of the games too. So like a lot of adrenaline leading up to that. And, uh, so I was able to, within about the first, I'd say kilometer, I'd moved myself into third place and, um, I was able to keep that position till the very end. But like you said, about halfway through about three kilometers in, um, you know, my heart rate and my breathing rate were pretty high and, um, I, it was hot. And I remember kind of feeling like, man, you know, if, if this was the finish line, like right in front of me and I just kind of sprinted to the finish, I would, I'd be fine. Like, I'd be like, nice effort, Brent. You did great. That was good. And, um, I was able to maintain a pretty similar pace cause I kept third. So no one behind me was able to catch me. Um, and it was really, really tough. You just kind of kept going deeper and deeper. And I just focused on my breathing and tried to focus on my running technique and just sort of, you know, all right, you know, get to that point and get to that point. And you just kind of kept pushing. And by the end I was in a pretty, pretty rough state. Um, you know, I was a little delirious and, uh, I couldn't, couldn't really function. I was trying to put some ice in like a towel and put it on my neck and I just like couldn't really do it. And I was trying to eat and I, I can usually eat right after an event, no problem. And I was just having trouble like opening up the packaging and um, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary after that, but you just, you know, I just kind of kept focusing on the next, the next little hurdle. And before you know it, time just passes and then you're there at the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> so micro goals then is, is probably the best way of putting that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I, I know I, I'll, um, I'll paraphrase this, but I remember hearing some story about some wounded soldier and I'm not comparing my performance at all to that, but, um, you know, I think he had to crawl out of some situation and he just kept looking two feet in front of him. He's like, well, you know, his legs were broken or something and he had to crawl. And so he said, well, you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna make it to that tree and I'm just gonna make it to that tree. And I think he covered like a lot, a long, really long distance, farther than you would think would be possible to crawl, not to mention after um, being in battle. But so definitely not to that extent, but the same sort of mindset where, you know, I just focused on my breathing, I focused on my technique, um, and uh, just sort of focused on the obstacles that were in front of me. Okay, just climb that hill and, you know, maybe maneuver up that way and just sort of small goals instead of thinking like, I can't do this for another three kilometers, because <laughs> I probably couldn't if I was thinking that way. Yeah, of course. Um, and then do you mind kind of explaining how the, the rest of the games unfolded for you and the, the like what, what happened from that point, please? Yeah. Um, so, you know, at that point, I, I, I had to go to the I went to the medic tent and they helped me cool down a bit and gave me some food and um, got like a little a couple of blisters on my feet looked after. And at that point, I was pretty scared that I might not be able to compete. Um, not too many people know that because it, it in the by as you'll see here as I explain it didn't really play into the rest of the weekend too much but the next event we had to do it was pretty much immediately after was a, a one rep max deadlift so you know you went out there and you deadlifted I think it was 440 440 pounds and then 450 and then 460 and it kept going up until you couldn't do it anymore 30 seconds of each bar and I got to a point back in the tent where I was like man I don't know if I can do this and then I really as I you know recovered a little better I was like, okay, Brent, you know, worst case scenario, you go out there, you can deadlift 440 ice cold, it'll hurt, you'll do it. And then you'll just, you can just say thank you and just leave and then go back to the medic tent. So once that happened, I kind of had this feeling of, okay, Brent, like your weekend's not over, you know, you can go out there and you'll be able to do that. You know, I could feel that I had that in me. And then, um, 
yeah, sure enough, uh, magic of recovery and what the body's capable of. I kind of went back and I had a little bit of time to warm up and usually my warm up's pretty thorough. <laughs> I didn't really have the time for that. So I kind of put on my belt, tightened it up and deadlifted. Like, I think it was 200, 300 and 380. And I was like, all right, let's go hit 440. <laughs> and I ended up, yeah, it's just like that. Um, it's like, what have I been doing all this time warming up for so long? And I ended up uh, tying my PR at 485 after all that, uh, which was pretty exciting. And then, um, and yeah, the rest of the weekend went well. Then we had a couple hour break and had this like sprint up the hill with a sandbag type thing. Um, I was able to win that event and I was sitting, I think in like fifth place overall after those three put together. And then, uh, yeah, the weekend went well. I mean, I, you know, I was still obviously pretty, pretty fatigued and pretty sore uh, all weekend as was everyone though. And, um, ended up finishing fourth overall, which was a really cool, really good performance for a rookie having never been there. Um, I won four events, which is, uh, I think, a, a record for the most wins for a rookie. And then, uh, you know, I had four event wins, but I obviously had a few events like the deadlift that, you know, I was in the bottom of the pack. So that's kind of what leveled me out. And, um, yeah, it was a great weekend. I mean, I, I achieved kind of what I wanted to, which was just to go in there and prove what I was capable of and enjoy the experience and, you know, try and kick some ass. And, yeah, that was pretty much, I mean, in a nutshell, it was just, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of cool events. and you know, it was, it was really hard by, I think it was, um, you know, Friday afternoon, I was saying to someone like, man, you know, I've never been this tired leading into a competition because we still had two and a half full days left. I'm like, man, I am sore and I am tired. But then by Sunday morning, you're like, ah, oh, it's, it's almost over because <laughs> it, it is really cool. And it's, it's cool to see what you're capable of even when you're that sore and tired. And, um, it'll, I'll just remind myself of that next year. Hopefully I'll make it again next year, uh, this year, I should say. And, um, you know, remind myself that no matter how sore you are, so is everyone else. And you can always, you can always get the work done. Yeah, it was, um, it was great to see actually, uh, coming from someone, uh, on a very outsider's point of view, watching, watching someone like watching you come from someone that I didn't really know as an athlete and seeing you come to, to finish in fourth place was, it was great. But I, I was wondering how that felt actually, like doing probably better than most people expected you to do. How, how was that? Yeah, it was good. I mean, um, you know, I went in with a mentality, you know, I, I felt like I had a bit of hype as a, as a rookie, um, having just missed out a couple years in a row. And, and I think I knew, and I think a lot of people knew that I was good at the long events, that I was good at running, that I was a former swimmer, um, that I was, you know, kind of athletic. So if there was something a little strange in the mix that I'd be able to figure it out, which I did in the, the strange events, those are kind of the ones that I actually won and placed well in. So I kind of, I felt like I had a little bit of rookie hype um, and I just sort of tried to believe it a little bit, you know, I was like, Hey, maybe they're right. You know, maybe, um, maybe all this work you've been putting in, you've, you've been just knocking on the door, but now that you're there, you're going to kick it down. And, uh, you know, so I went in knowing that it could kind of go one of two ways that one, it might go how it went, which was placing really high and being in the mix of the top guys. Um, and the other one might be that, you know, I might be one, one of the lower heats and just kind of be cruising through and not have a really memorable performance, but I was just sort of, uh, willing and ready for either. And, uh, didn't want to, um, you know, didn't want to be surprised if I was at the top, um, but also didn't want to be disappointed if I wasn't. And so that's kind of the mentality I went in with. So when things started to go my way and, you know, halfway through, I could sort of see like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with these guys at the top. Like, you know, I might not finish on the podium, but I'm going to be in the top 10 all weekend. I could kind of see that unfolding and, um, you know, it was exciting and it was fun, but it, you know, I tried not to let it get to me and let the pressure build. I just was like, sweet, it's where I belong and just kept throwing down. Yeah, nice. And then yeah. how does that transfer into this year as well? Because obviously you've now got expectations around you or, or higher expectations yep. around you. Like you've, I'm, I've really liked one, uh, something you said. You, you said something along the lines of once you release yourself from the outcome, it becomes a lot easier. Um, yeah. And um, can you talk about that and how that's transferred to this year, whether there's more pressure on you now and, and kind of how that's developed? Yeah, I, I think there is a little bit. Um, you know, uh, some people are very casually saying something along the lines of like, oh, you know, I think you're going to do X, Y, Z at the games this year. Just casually believing that I'm going to qualify again. <laughs> you know, like, oh, of course you'll qualify. You know, last year you came first, uh, which I'm, I'm very aware is not the case. If, uh, if you look, you know, regionals is extremely competitive. And if you aren't 
hundred percent ready and extremely fit and even probably a little bit of luck, you won't make it back to the games. Um, hopefully I don't need too much luck this year, but, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I'm, I'm very, there, there definitely is a little more pressure, but, um, I think I've done a pretty good job of, of managing that and not letting it affect, you know, what I need to do each day. Um, I think I mentioned in another interview, but, uh, I think that, when you have sort of a breakout year, even, even if you slowly gain success, once you sort of have like a, a lot of success, at least in this sport from what I've seen, there's like sort of two paths you can go down that might lead to a, a, a bad year. Um, the one path is letting that pressure get to you and, you know, maybe training too much and going, you know, I, I got to win, I got to win, I got to win. And you're training so much that you burn yourself out. Uh, and then the other path is, you know, you have, this pressure and you um, you sort of believe the believe your own hype too much to a point where you're you know you're going on all these vacations and you're doing like fit trips and you're maybe not training as hard because you're like ah you know I, I can skip out on training today I mean I, you know, I came forth the games like these guys got nothing on me <laughs> you're just kind of like casual ah, you know like ah, yeah, I'll do this photo shoot and let me I'll go to this thing and I'll you know I'll do this on a you know I'll just roll through this workout and, you know you kind of just like well think you're a little too too hot for your own you know your own to work hard again and uh and then you know you get to a point where you kind of realize like oh man like a couple guys have maybe caught up to me because I haven't really been grinding away in the dark and you know on my own and that that sort of that sort of um that tough it out mentality that probably got you there you just lose sight of that because you're you're you think you're famous or something um so I've tried to balance those two and I think I've done a pretty good job where I still have I still keep pressure on myself and I still you know I, I still make sure that I, I train alone um and, and really push myself internally um but also you know enjoy the experiences like you know I've done photo shoots uh, I have, I'm not going to say that I haven't done those but you know find that balance between the two and not get sucked into um where I think some other athletes maybe have failed after like a really good year. Yeah. Can you talk for a bit about training alone as well? Because um, I know it's, it's a very personal preference, but why that, why that kind of appeals to you? Um, I find that, um, you know, I was actually talking about it with someone at work here and uh, I work in a tech company and we um, we're starting to, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of details because, you know, and long story short, we're, we're starting to become a bit of an industry leader in some of the stuff we're doing. And I think part of that is because we're in Kelowna, which although there is a tech scene here, it's nothing like Silicon Valley or anything. Um, but because we're here, you know, we don't, we don't know what everyone else is doing. So we're thinking, oh, surely someone's moving faster than us. So like, let's just keep working. Like, let's, okay, why don't we do that? And then we're moving fast. And sometimes it's like, oh, you know, feels like we're moving slow because, you know, we're like, hey, let's implement this this new process, and it takes two weeks. We're like, ugh, I can't believe that took two weeks. That's like really frustrating. You know, we thought of it, so surely we can just implement it. Whereas no one else is thinking of implementing that, nor if they did, it would take them two months, not two weeks. And so for me, it's sort of the same with training, where you know, I'm training alone, and you know, I'm not getting wrapped up one in what other people are doing as far as like how much they can squat. You know, I'm going in. I'm squatting whatever feels right, you know, with good technique and then I'm leaving it. But then when it comes to conditioning, you know, let's say I'm doing 20 pull-ups, 20 burpees, 20 thrusters, three rounds. Um, you know, if I finish that or if I'm halfway through, I'm thinking, man, someone out there is going unbroken. Like, you know, surely someone out there can, can do this whole thing unbroken. Like I have to go faster, surely. Whereas maybe if I was training with some other regional or games athletes and I was like, you know, 10 reps ahead of them, that's ah, sweet. Like, this, this, this is a good workout for them and I'm already beating them. So I just got to stay ahead of them and that's a good score. And I've done that before where I've trained with people and I left the workout feeling like, Brent, you would have went faster if you were alone. Like, you know, you, you got ahead of them and, you know, I'm a gamer a bit. And so, um, you know, I might use them as a bit of a pace bunny and just make sure I beat them. Like, Sweet, beat you. Um, I've definitely, I've definitely done that. And when I'm alone, I usually finish thinking like, and I don't, I don't know what I could have done differently. And I almost like a little bit of regret, not an unhealthy amount, but just enough like, ah, oh, man, like, you know, I, I should have, okay, next time. And then that next workout, you try to, you, you think of like the most aggressive strategy and you're like, okay, I'm going to do that twice. And you just, you know, you hit it with that much more uh, vigor. And then when regionals comes around and I start comparing scores to people and I start testing workouts, I have that fear again. And then I talk to my, my mates and they're like, oh, you know, I did that in seven minutes. I'm like, oh sweet. I did it in like six 30. I, I thought you were fitter than me. kind of. Um, yeah. 
so I, that's why I like training alone, you know, mentally, I'm um, pushing myself. And I, I think Frazier, um, uh, Matt Frazier, I think that's kind of why he likes it too. Um, I haven't, I think I remember hearing something about that, but I know he does most of his training alone and he's kind of got that like internal, like a bit of fear where he's like, man, someone's going to beat me. And, you know, last year it showed that like no one really did. Mm. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I think that works. It, it works for some people. Yeah. Okay. Works for me. Nice. Um, can we go for a bit? Like I've, I've like been been jotting down notes. And I've got so many questions for you, but I think <laughs> I think all we want to go for is. Um, so the way I see it, we've got we've got four different kind of styles of, of workout for like for the mindset side of things. The first one is like going up for single lifts, or um, mm-hmm. because we we can easily freak ourselves out. Um, so first of all, can we go through like do you have any self talk prior? Do you have a pre lifting routine? Do you have like special kind of uh, do you think of cues? Is it, like what's going on bef- before you lift? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I'm not really sure. Um, definitely confidence. You know, um, usually, you know, I, I try not to, um, to be too, uh, if, if you, if you watch some videos of me in competition, like before a big lift or even right after it's definitely if, you know, like based on like body language and stuff, the time when I'm going to look the most like cocky or arrogant, um, you know, I kind of puff my chest up a little bit and, um, you know, you got to believe like you're the baddest man on the floor. Um, especially if you're lifting something like around a PR for you or something that could win the event, something that's, you know, big by CrossFit standards, you know? And so I'll usually have like, like aggressively relaxed, like, you know, you can't, you can't get really tightened up and, you know, tense up too much. Um, but I'll usually think of something like, you know, like you're the baddest man on the floor, you know, you're too strong for this or, you know, something like really kind of overly cocky and arrogant. Um, just, you know, just that like belief, like this is a joke for you, Brent, like just go out there and show them what you're made of. Like, just get this over with that kind of mentality. Um, because as soon as you have a little bit of doubt, you're probably not going to lift it. Um, so that's, that's usually how I go into it. And I'll have some cues, right. You know, depending on the lift, like some, some, some cues that work for me, like, you know, like with a snatch, you know, like strong and slow off the floor like don't jerk it off the floor because if I jerk it then my hips come up too soon and then I lose position or and then you know once I catch it like grip the bar tight and push up or just a couple just like really small cues maybe with the clean um I'll think about being patient in the pull so just like pushing 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 keeping my arms straight for as long as I can and then once I hit the squat just drive out of the squat as fast as I possibly can um just like just simple cues you know for everyone that might be knees out you know for someone or whatever that is but Wonder at max lifts, I definitely approach with a different mindset than I'm sure some of the other ones you're going to come to, but it's definitely one of, of arrogance, really. Mm-hmm. You kind of, I, I definitely kind of, kind of pump myself up and, you know, I'm like, like let's, let's do this. Like, let's no, finish just, this off. Yeah. That's essential. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Um, that's the common trait I see between everyone is, is that kind of borderline arrogance and mm-hmm. that kind of, um, yeah, the, the, the things you say to yourself that you wish you weren't saying to yourself, but you are because it helps you. Oh yeah. And you know, I'm not like that all the time, but, um, it helps, you know, to get that lift that it works for me. Um, yeah. yeah. If, if the goal is to lift more weight, it, it, it 100% <laughs> helps. Um, yeah. the next, the next kind of, um, area is the kind of lactate threshold where it is pure intensity, um, sled work, for example, and it's just start out a hundred percent and see how little from a hundred percent you can go. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was when that, when that proper suffering hits, when that, that pain and discomfort kind of, uh, embraces you, mm-hmm. what's the, what's the attempt from there or what's the self talk from there? So with something like that, that's a good question. Um, because one of the events we have at regionals uh, is like that event six you have to start with an aerodyne for me, it's going to be a sprint. So I'll be starting with an aerodyne sprint max effort, basically try to get off the bike absolutely as soon as I can. And then just kind of hold on for the rest of the movements, the burpees and the, the sandbag all the shoulder cleans. Um, I would say just trying to stay calm, you know, um, sort of something along, uh, something along the lines of um, like, you know, it's supposed to hurt Brent. You know, like yeah. that's what you're here for. Like, good. You know, like yeah. there it is. <laughs> Ta-da. Yeah. And so, just like focusing on my breathing, trying to stay like even. You know, you're gonna feel like the world kind of feels like it's spinning a little bit, and you're like losing control, and like certain you know parts of your body maybe aren't working like they're like you want them to. Like your legs just feel extremely heavy, and you can't seem to pick them up, 
or your arms or you, know, you can't seem to do a, a burpee anymore. Like you can't push up. And so I'll just kind of not always close my eyes, but almost a feeling of closing my eyes and just like, it's okay. Like, you know, it's, that's what you're here for, man. Like, you know, just, you know, like I'll, I'll over, you know, if my knees aren't picking up, say in something like a, like a sled sprint, I'll just think about like Brent, like knee yourself in the chin, like get them as high as you can. They're not going to get as high as what you want them to, but do it anyway. And just sort of like this calm, like almost like a motherly voice. Like, it's okay. You're going to be fine. You know, like no matter how much it hurts when it's done and you're going to feel fine in a minute or two, just okay. sort of like, you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't freak out. Don't stop. Just, you know, this is why you're here. This is kind of the sport you chose, man. Like here yeah. you are like, let's do it. And so, you're, so you, yeah. go on, go ahead. Yeah. So I think because, because those, uh, you know, there's all these like physical responses to the pain. Um, and so if you watch me in those types of events, usually I don't have too much emotion on my face. I'm usually just very calm. Um, I'm not like uh, grimacing and stuff, maybe at the very, very end. Um, cause there's no choice, but, uh, you know, to, cause that kind of just doing that, sends you know sends responses to the rest of you that you know you're in a stressful situation so it's going to increase that so as much as you can do to sort of calm yourself down yeah yeah that's exactly what i coach everyone to do um disassociation and do you ever yeah. remind yourself of um of like the end objective when when it gets to that situation do you think like this is why i'm here this is my why this is this is who i am uh no not too much um you know i i don't no, I know what you mean. Um, and I think that works for some people and maybe, but like, you know, I've heard sometimes like I'll be in an event, maybe in training and I'm pushing really hard. Someone will be like, come on, Brian, like this is, this is the point that matters like to get you to the games. Like this is, you know, work hard. And, and I, and I kind of like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Shut up. You know, <laughs> like I'll hear maybe in the crowd, someone will say that like, come on, push for gold. And I'm like, like it kind of like it doesn't throw me off, yeah. but it kind of does. I'm just like, what are you like, what? Because that's not at all what I'm thinking about. Um, you know, I don't, like, I love my fiance, but I never think about her when I'm working out. Like, yeah. it's not like, oh, do it for her. Or, like, do it for your, your kid. I don't have a kid, but, you know, do it for your kid. And I think about them when it gets hard. Nah, like, uh, it's not even that. It's just, like, it's the task at hand. Okay. You know, and it's, it's just the pride in finishing as fast as you can. Um, and just that's, that's my job right now is, is just finishing whatever it is in front of me. You know, I'm not really, like, even you know, I've had events like a, the final event of the weekend that, you know, like the fate of the weekend was on that event. And, you know, the, the, the fate of the weekend never crossed my mind. It was just the fate of that event. You know, it wasn't like, Oh shit. Like if I miss this last lift, I, I'll never, I won't make the games. Or if I hit this lift quick, I'll make the games. It's very much, you know, not, not from like a, it just, it just doesn't cross my mind. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of brings up the question, what, what is your why? Do you have a, a clearly defined why? Do you have a, a kind of something you're trying to achieve? Or is there anything like that? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think a little bit, I, you know, I like to, I like to work hard. Um, I like to achieve my goals. I think that for me, the, the feeling of satisfaction after working really hard at something for a really long time, I had a, I had a coach once say, um, really the reason he told us this is because he was trying to get us not to party and he said the, the the parties are best when you save them and uh you know because we were partying too much and uh it was affecting how good we were at our at the sport and um and I think I kind of you know like some of the more memorable moments I have with my friends are when you know we we won a big competition right and we celebrated after or, or just like the moment the, the direct moment afterwards or the, um, you know, maybe the party that night and the same with, same with CrossFit, you know, like after training for, you know, a couple of years and then having like a big weekend, um, you know, that feeling of elation and, um, joy and, and pride and a job well done. I think that, uh, you know, I think like, uh, life's like short pleasures, like, you know, going out and doing a drug. It's like, yeah, like that feels good, I guess for some people, but it's not really like the same as, you know, really dedicating yourself to, you know, your education and like finishing your education, which is going to get you a good job. And like that feeling of, wow, I finished my last test. Like, that's awesome. You know, I got it out. I got out of school, like debt free, you know, um, those sorts of, uh, those sorts of feelings. And then with CrossFit, 
you know, um, just seeing how good I can become and like seeing the progress I've made and like being really proud of the people I've met along the way and the relationships I've made. So just kind of like an overarching, you know, I like to work hard. I think that's, I think that's part of it too, man. Like I just, I'm just kind of hardwired. Like I, I don't, I feel like more guilt when I have like a lazy weekend than like relaxation, you know, like I don't, I don't really get a lot of joy from just like doing nothing. You know, I kind of, kind of just have to keep moving and this is just like an avenue for that love of like working hard yeah no i I think it shows um not only from what you said but the way you train as well and especially that that disassociation switching yourself off from the pain like being very kind of uh straight faced like look at lance armstrong like obviously um validity aside like look look at what you achieved and the way you achieved it it's exactly the same it was switch off and that pissed everyone else off it was competing around him which was interesting um (laughs) yeah do you reckon there were any influences that gave you that drive and that work ethic or the ability to switch off from discomfort? Um, well, definitely, definitely my parents and my coaches. Um, I'm, I don't really like, I don't really watch a lot of sports, so I haven't, um, you know, I don't like draw inspiration from a lot of, you know, like Michael Jordan or something like that. He's sweet, but um Mostly like coaches, um, the disassociation probably came from swimming. Um, you know, you have to be pretty relaxed when, and like really focus, like the technique has to be just exactly the same at the end of the race as the beginning, but obviously at the end of the race, you're in a lot more pain. And so I think that disassociation came from that sport. And then, um, just in general, I had some really good coaches. Like I had a really good, um, some really good volleyball coaches, like my high school volleyball coach, Art Bichival. We did a lot of mental training. We would kind of sit in a classroom every week or one, twice a week even. And, you know, as a team, we'd go through mental training exercises. So, you know, learning a lot from them and then just my parents just instilling, you know, I'm lucky to have great parents. They just instilled really good values in me and, you know, kept, kept my sister and I really busy and, you know, you know, sort of gave, showed us, you know, something of a path of kind of how to live. And I think, you know, I just sort of like was able to take that opportunity and just, you know, kind of instilled like good, good values, I guess. And just like, you know, work hard for what I do. And just, I don't really worry about too much about, um, you know, the outcome is just like, you know, kind of trusting that, well, if you just keep working hard, good things will happen. And that's for the most part, that's usually pretty true. I mean, if, if you're watching this, you're probably in, you know, Western country. So odds are, if you just work really hard, eventually good things will come your way because, you know, you have clean drinking water and you have the internet, so you'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Are there any of the, uh, the mental training aspects that either stick with you today, like you still use them or were particularly impactful back then? Uh, A really good one. I don't use it anymore um, just because it's not really applicable to our sport, but we would have uh, in volleyball, we'd have a reset button. So volleyball, you know, a play happens and it usually ends on a mistake. Um, often, you know, maybe by your, you or your team and then you have like 10, 20 seconds and then the next play starts. And if you let like the mistakes dwell on you, then kind of compounds and then you get into a, a, a negative space and uh, you play, you don't play as well. And so we had something called the reset button and, you know, we pretended there was a button on the side of our head and we would press it and it was our mental cue like, whatever happened and often good or bad. Um, but mostly when the bad things happen, you'd, you'd have actually like a physical cue where you push the reset button. And that was your way of saying like, it's over. It doesn't matter now. Like let's focus on the next play. I think that's a really good one. And um, yes, one yes. for young athletes that could, could use that. Um, yeah. I, it doesn't really work as much for CrossFit. You can't like miss a lift and you know, yeah. <laughs> it's not really time for that. Um, but but in yeah, between events, just, definitely. Yeah, well, yeah, totally, right? Um, I don't really use the physical cue anymore, but, um, you know, and, and the big thing we would talk about in volleyball was controllables and uncontrollables. And um, yeah. the majority of things you get upset about are uncontrollables, yeah. like a judge's call, a ref's call, something in the past is uncontrollable. Um, you know, the score, uh, how much, uh, all these things. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, even even the things that are controllable lead to things that are uncontrollable because the things you could control are now in the past. So now they're uncontrollable. So how are you going to deal with them? <laughs> exactly. uh, so really the only things you control is how you're reacting to things and um, what you're doing moving forward. And so just kind of, you know, framing your life. But, um, you know, like if you're in debt or something like that, I've been talking to someone who's you know in debt and it's like, well, that, 
I mean, it's a, it was a controllable, but now it's an uncontrollable, like you're in debt. Um, so it's like, what are you going to do about it? If you, it sucks. Money stress is terrible, but you know, it's like, well, what are you going to do about it? Instead of just like dwelling on the fact that you made all these mistakes. Yeah. No, um, that, that reset button I think is fascinating. And mm. I've kind of hypothesized that what you've, what you've actually done is ingrained its function so well that you can press it quicker than you realize. And that's the whole point of those cues for them to go yeah. from very physical, tactile things to instant. And I think that's probably what you've done quite well. Yeah. Why yeah. That. Um, do you have any meditation practice or anything like that? Um, not at the moment, really. Uh, something sort of flirted with the idea. Um, sometimes I'll do, uh, I do some like deep belly breathing before I go to bed. Um, which is actually just more for a physical thing that one of my physios is recommending to um, uh, just recruit some different muscles and stuff in my abdominal cavity just for um, lifting and stuff. But so there's a bit of that and that kind of leads into a bit of meditation. Um, not specifically. I mean, um, sometimes I'll just lie down on the ground, like obviously in the float tank, you know, I'll just, just calm my mind. And then once I feel like it's calm, I'll just sort of start thinking about, like an event like regionals or something and sort of just see where my mind wanders to back in high school, we would do specific meditation drills where, you know, you would try to control your mind and just see a black room with a light bulb and all you would see is the light bulb and you'd turn it on and off. Um, and, or, you know, you'd see a chalkboard and you'd write the alphabet on it and see if you, how long it took before the letters kind of disappeared. Cause obviously it's a pretty complicated, yeah. um, board. And so just things like that. I don't really do those anymore. Um, yeah, I, it would, <laughs> It would be nice. I probably should, but at the moment I don't. <laughs> I don't really have any. I, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes just close my eyes and just, you know, just I often just sort of, if, if I'm getting stressed, I'll just try to close my eyes and think about like, okay, like, like get to the root of why I'm stressed, which okay. is really good in the float tank. But even sometimes at home, I'll just be kind of spinning my wheels and like, all right, Brent, like, settle down. Like, what's 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 bothering you? Is it something you can control? Is it something you can maybe tick something off your to-do list that'll like relieve a lot of stress? You know, for a while that was doing my individual taxes. I think it was just like haunting me in the back of my mind. I'm like, brain, you just got to get this done. And then when I got it done, there was this huge relief. Um, and I just wasn't addressing that as the main thing. I was thinking it was, oh, you know, I'm mad at this person or, oh, I'm, you know, frustrated at the weather. It's like, no, it's, it's taxes. Like, this is why you're upset. Get it over with. So yeah, yeah. just closing my eyes and just like kind of taking stock of where I am trying to like see myself from outside me instead of just like looking through my eyes type thing. Are there any resources that have helped you kind of develop that mindset in, in terms of like, again, it's the disassociation. Like um, I know a lot of people were very affected by um, the obstacle is the way by Ryan holiday and like philosophy and things like that. But is there anything that you've found particularly helpful, maybe books or documentaries or something like that? I might um, write that one down. Uh, I'll ask you about it after. I'll yeah, sure. The way. But um, I like a lot of the stuff by Joshua Medcalf, like yeah. Topwood Carry Water. Um, I, I want to get into more of, he has some Train to Be Clutch stuff. He has a book called Burn Your Goals. He's got another one coming out called Pound the Stone, which we'll probably get. But I've, I've read Chalkwood Carry Water twice. Um, and yeah, I love that book. I, he Like listening to him talk, he has a lot of, things that just really resonate with me and it's something he's a book that I got from my coach from high school so yeah pretty much everything he does like really resonates with with how I want to how I want to do stuff yeah so I, I'd say if, if there's one thing it would be that definitely nice nice that sounds good and um, it's gone on the the to buy bit uh the to buy yeah, sorry totally man Tro Tropwood, and it's an easy read it's like pretty quick um and I have read the champion's mind by uh I can't remember his name he's he's a a mental training coach that's worked with like Kobe yeah. and um, it, it's good too. It kind of wanders around a little, but there's some really good tenants in there about entering the flow state okay. um, more. So it's, just, yeah, nice. it's about entering, entering the flow state and how to get there and what it's like. Um, it's not as much like step by step as I would like, but it's still good. It's still a good book. <laughs> of course. Um, and on the subject of goals, cause you mentioned um, throw your goals. Where was that? Um, yeah. You, uh, do you have any goals? Do you have specific goals or is it more of a concept? More of a concept. You know, um, I don't have like, I want to win the games. Um, I don't really have that as a goal. Um, I, you know, I know by now that like, I guess I don't want to set a goal that I don't really have a lot of control over. You know, if, if you know, if, if Pat Vellner just gets better than me, then he'll just keep, <laughs> 
beating me and I just will never win the games, you know, and like, I can't control how good he gets. So, uh, you know, I mean, for me, it's like right now with, with CrossFit, I mean, right now in my life, I sort of have three goals. It's um, the relationship with my fiance, um, the uh, pursuing my career here at my job, Straw House Inc. And, um, you know, maximizing my potential in the sport of CrossFit. Yeah. So that's really, you know, and those are obviously quite broad. Um, you know, I don't have like a specific, I'm getting married, um, which is, you know, a goal, but that's not like, you know, it's not like I've got there. So I'm like, sweet, like it's over. <laughs> like, I don't have to worry about that finished. anymore. I got like, it's finished. <laughs> you know, it's a continual thing. And obviously with the job, it's a continual thing. And then with CrossFit, it's a, it's this continuing pursuit of, um, you know, like last night I met a guy who's really big into some like holistic practices, like um, recovery with sauna. And so I'm going to look into that and that might improve my CrossFit thing. Mm. And, you know, I'm always just kind of looking for an edge and looking for, I'm already a little bit excited about the off season after the games. And I always like reevaluate, okay, like what am I eating? Like, how am I recovering? Like what kind of mattress am I sleeping on? Like, you know, what, what supplements am I taking? Am I, you know, like, what are, what are we, what are my weaknesses? Like, how can we train those again? Like, are we doing enough core work? Are we doing enough shoulder stability work? Um, you know, what do we think is coming? And just like, kind of like, like sharpening the saw and just like continually just like building. And so for me, I just want to see, I just want to continue to see how good I can get at CrossFit um, until I'm like sick of it, which, you know, it doesn't look like that's coming up anytime soon. I'd say definitely, definitely another year for sure. Um, but maybe two, maybe three, I don't really know. I'll see how, that, I think a lot of that will depend on my career and how, how Claire and I are doing as far as like maybe starting a family and yeah, how I can balance all that. But yeah, I don't have a specific goal. Um, in a way, I mean, you know, I kind of have achieved, like I made it to the games, I won regionals. So in a way, like those kind of boxes are very much checked off. Um, I think if I hadn't made the games, I'd be kind of like, yeah, like the, I kind of need to get that done. And that was kind of what it was like. I was like, you know, you know, you have it in you that you can make it there if things fall into place. So just like get it done, Brent. So that was kind of, that was very much a goal. But now it's just, you know, I mean, continue to make, not that I'm like easing off. If anything, I've ramped everything up. Um, but yeah, just continue to maximize my potential. I mean, it'd be nice to make it to the podium. But at the same time, like, you know, if I kept placing fourth or fifth, I, I don't think I would like, look back in 10 years and look back at it with regret at all. Um, or if I never made it back, I'd still be like just as proud of fourth as I think I would have been with third. Nice. nice. Yeah. I, lo I love it. Um, I, I particularly enjoy the fact that your balance between like the health, wealth, love and happiness thing, like across all, 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 all four aspects, yeah. you seem to have a kind of goals and drives, which is from a, from a psychological point, just so much more healthy, I think. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it works, you know, um, it can be pretty stressful, like trying to balance all those things. And I'm fortunate that each one of them is, is flexible. Um, you know, like obviously there's, there's times of the year where Claire and I don't get a lot of quality time together. And then there's times of the year where I'm not training as much, but I'm at work more and so on, but it all, it all kind of works out. And you know, it's, it's what it's the decisions I've made. So it's like, if I get really stressed out, it's like, well, Brent, you chose this. Like you could just quit something if you really were too fed up and you're like, yeah, yeah. Brent, you're quit complaining. This is awesome. So <laughs> how do you find the balance between work and training? Uh, it's a hard balance. Um, it's really good though. Honestly, most days I usually end the day feeling like oh, I wish I could have got more done at work than like, I wish I could have trained more because yeah. um, the training is usually, you know, my coach gives me the program. I find a way to get it all in. I hit it hard and I'm like, well, I don't need to do anymore. Like you keep, I've trusted him that this is what I need for the day, but with work, there's always something right. There's yeah. it's never done. It's, you know, I've got this to-do list longer than it'll ever be <laughs> short. And, you know, there's just always things to do. And I, I love my job and I love what I do here. So the balance is tough. I mean, I'm lucky we, I work in a tech company, so, you know, I can get in at nine and leave at three and go train and come back at seven, or I can, you know, work 10 hours one day and six the next or come in at whatever, you know, early, late, whatever. So um, that, that, that makes it, really easy and, and they know what that I'm training for so you know during like you know May and um, July you know I'm probably not in the office quite as much but then like the month after those I'm, I catch up on everything yeah. I get everything done so yeah they're pretty pretty cool yeah. and now I'm going to link it back all the way to where we started this uh, this tangent which was uh, the, the four types of events the the third one is the kind oh, of the yeah. typical CrossFit um, domain i um well if there is a typical cross domain like the kind of the six minutes to 18 minutes or six minutes to kind of 15 ish minutes how mm -hmm. do you because i think that's i think that's the hardest one 
because there's obviously pacing. You have to pace. There's yeah. no just like go for it. Um, and also it's def- it is an endurance event, but at the same time, it's not an hour where you have one specific pace and you have multiple yeah. movements, obviously. So how does, what's the self-talk like going to that? Obviously it's dependent on the movements and, and what it is, but can you talk to me about your approach to that? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the events. Um, I'd usually do pretty well on those, um, especially like a little longer, like, you know, like the 10 to 18 minute sort of chipper type, you know, movements. Those are the ones I usually do well in. Um, just going in calm, you know, if, if your heart rate's jacked up because you're nervous or overexcited or overstimulated, that's like not a good thing at all. And, um, you know, just not being in a rush. Um, I feel like a lot of people are in a rush, you know, they, they take off too, they bite off too much they can chew. And like, once the heart rate's up, it's not coming back down. Um, so just like, you know, just being very aware and being just like being in tune with, with what your body's feeling. And, um, from like, a yeah, just like, and, and it's something that's hard to teach. Um, I think a lot of, I'm pretty, you know, I think I started CrossFit and I just kind of knew how to do it. Um, and some people just, you know, you watch them do some workout and you're just like, like within two minutes, they're, they're past the point of no return. And, um, you know, uh, so for me, I don't know. I mean, the mindset there is just, uh, those are, that's the easiest one for me. Um, cause you know, you just, you just kind of roll into it, right. You just breathe and just really the big one there is focusing on technique. And, you know, I guess, um, let's think of a workout. It's, you know, you start with like, a uh, 20, 20, 10 movements, 20 reps of each two rounds or something with a, with a time cap, even if it's say like an 18 minute time cap, you know, three, two, one, go, you just sort of walk forward and you start one. And then, you know, you try to get through it as easily as possible and you just kind of move on to the next one and just, you know, don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to stop. But if you do stop, don't stop for very long and just kind of just roll, just stay really calm and just, um, just be very, just don't look at anyone else and be like very, very in tune with like what you're feeling and like where your heart rate is and like your, your pump in your forearms and your pump in your quads and you know, like exactly that point at which you need to stop two or three reps before failure rest just enough. So you can do another set about the same size and just kind of rinse and repeat and just stay calm. And then near the end, when it starts to get hard and the time caps getting close, you just put the pedal to the metal. Nice. Nice. And what about the, the kind of the true endurance events, the the very rare occasion you get something that's roughly an hour or 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, with those, I just focus on breathing very much, um, breathing and just finding like a breathing rate that I feel like I can maintain for the entire event. You know, if that's swimming, it's like, all right, you're breathing every five strokes, which is going to force you to swim a little slower because if you're breathing, if you have to breathe every three odds are you're using up too much oxygen or if you're running, you know, maybe like breathing out every five steps and in every five steps and you can't keep that up if you're running fast. So that means you have to, you have to speed up your cadence, but not taking very fast steps, which means you're going to be running kind of slow. Um, and just with those events if in a comp, in a competition type environment, um, just very just not getting wrapped up in where anyone else is, right. Just, um, just completely focusing on your body and your pace and, just try to, you know, like the first 20 minutes of that should be pretty easy. So, you know, just kind of enjoying it. And I'll sometimes let my mind wander or I'll do like math. I'll be like, all right, you know, you, you've ran for 20 minutes. So that's 30 minutes left. And at this pace, you you know, you went by this many signposts. So that means you should probably find about this more many signposts. And then you're another 10 minutes in, you know, or whatever markers are along yeah. the course. Or if you're rowing, I'll just think, okay, you know, this 100 meters go a little faster. And the next 100 meters, you're allowed to go another slower hundred meters is about 11 strokes. Why don't you count down from 11? Just like stupid yeah. shit like that to keep disassociation. Like you talked about. No, it's, it's very present at the same time. It's, it's entirely yeah. focused on the situation. Oh um, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, th- I think there so you- many people want to switch off and like get on with something else. And I think that's the, the secret of success is not being present, but you're there. And like you said, focusing on the breath, it brings you, it's, it's like meditation. It brings you to where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you're not really focusing on, Oh, this is so bad. And this is so hard. Like you're focusing on the task and like the future and not as much about like the pain that you're in or like, Oh, this is, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but you're very much just focused on elements of what's going to make you successful to finish what you're, what you started. Yeah, of course. Um, can you talk to me for a tiny bit about the, the way that was it 2014 and 15 regionals went down mm-hmm. and the, the process after that of getting back on track and obviously disappointment. And, um, you mentioned that you were kind of just feeling shit about training for a long time. 
Yeah. Um, so 2013 was my first year of CrossFit. Um, really enjoyed it. Went to regionals, came like sixth or seventh. It was a lot of fun, like no regrets. Next year, had a bit of an injury in the off season. And so I'd moved back home to Canada and I was like, all right, like, I'm just going to do my thing. Enjoy regionals, like kind of see what happens. Just like go to the new region, meet the boys and figure it out. And I almost made the games that year, which was a really big surprise. Um, and, uh, I was in a position to, to make the games. And then on the last event, I failed a bunch of overhead squats, heavy overhead squats, and another guy passed me. Um, and, you know, so outside looking in, like, oh, he must be depressed. I can't believe he let it slip through his fingers. I didn't really see it that way. I mean, the weekend, it went incredibly well. Um, I enjoyed it. I was looking forward to the next year. I was proud of my bronze medal because the top two made it that year. And it was, like, sweet, you know, like, I had no regrets really. And the next year I started to put more pressure on myself. I was like, this is your chance to make the games. Like, you know, you should be good enough now. Like, make it happen. Put a lot of pressure on myself. Had like a really small injury leading into regionals, um, which was my own fault. And that weighed on me like, oh, Brent, what have you done? What have you done? You're not going to, I don't know if you're going to be able to make it through. So all this stress. Um, and then again, sort of same thing. I was in first, slipped down to second. And then on the last event, I slipped to like second to seventh um, because everyone was so close. Uh, and I just didn't go fast enough on the last event. Um, I hadn't been able to practice it and uh, just, you know, kind of, it was this like all out sort of barbell clean sprint thing. And I just kind of like waltzed through it instead of just like attacked it. And um, which was my own fault. And as soon as I finished the event, I knew I was like, Brent, like, what have you done? Like you were kind of, I was just sort of in this like autopilot mode. And then I finished, I'm like, Brent, like, why did you go so slow? I just, just, I don't know. It just kind of happened. Right. And then, uh, yeah, the months after, and so I didn't make the games and I felt like I could have, and you know, had I done things right, I should have. And, um, yeah, it was like, it was hard, you know, for a while I was rolling through training, kind of enjoying it, but like was really kind of depressed, I think. And, um, took me a while to sort of realize that and, I was training and, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like still compete at a high level. I like wasn't sure if it was worth it after putting in so much and not reaching my goal. And I just sort of had to reframe and get into the mindset that I'm in now that it's like, you know, I needed to get to a point where like all the work would be worth it if I didn't make it again. And I needed to get to that place because, you know, at the end of the day, I might put in that work again and not make it again. And I needed to make sure that, you know, that, that kind of heartbreak wouldn't happen again if I didn't make it. And I'd be like, Hey, you know, it was a good year. And I think this year, if, if I didn't make it, I'd still say, man, this was a great year. Like I would do it again, even if I didn't make the games and I need to be in that place. So I talked to one of my old volleyball coaches and he actually put me on the Joshua Medcalf path and showed me that book. And, you know, I, I went to him, I said, man, I got it. Well, I didn't know this at first, that mindset I was just talking about, but I was like, you know, I want to go in with this like full belief that I'm going to win coach. Like, like, what should I do? You know, like, and, and he just sent me this quote from Joshua Metcalf that like, you know, you don't have control over that. The guy who's going to win is ironically the guy who knows he could fail just as likely as he could win. It's a really good quote from Joshua Metcalf. I was like, oh shit. Like, that's exactly what I need to hear, of course. And so then I read some books by him and just sort of brought myself back into that mindset of the process and, you know, the, the enjoyment of the process and letting go of the outcome instead of just like being hell bent on trying to win, trying to qualify. And then sure enough, the next year I won and I qualified. Sorry, yeah. I, like your mic's, uh, mic's being a bit funny at the end. Can you just repeat what you said oh, the last sorry. Bit? That's right. Um, what did I say at the end there? Um, yeah, focusing on, yeah, so I started to just focus on the outcome. Or, sorry, it's, not it's the, the outcome. process. Yeah. <laughs> on the process, yeah, enjoying yeah. the process, enjoying getting better, enjoying, uh, you know, um, and not, not, not just solely focusing on like winning, qualifying. And then with that mindset, I was able to win and qualify. And it was probably that much sweeter um, because I enjoyed the journey just yeah. as much as the success. And, uh, and then, yeah, I, but I think it's, I, it's been a really good mindset for me um, and just a lot more relaxing. It's allowed me to, um, to train better. And then I think also perform better because you're not standing on the finish starting line thinking I got to win, I got to win. You're just like, well, you know, my training's led me here and it's time for me to show what I can do. And let's see how good that is compared to these other guys who've been training hard. And cool. You know? Yeah. I think it affords you a freedom to compete in a flow state and compete that's without it. consequence. That's yeah, it. that's, that's, that's a hundred percent. it, And that's what happened last year. I, I was in a flow state, like for seven out of seven events. It was so cool. Nice. You know, I was like, you know, I was obviously in a lot of pain, but I was, I remember one event I was doing these like snatches and, kind of a slower paced event, like this 20 minute grind. And I was doing these like kettlebell snatches and I could hear, 
uh, my family cheering for me off to the right up in the stadium. I was doing these snatches with good technique and I knew how many reps I was on. I was like, oh, I wonder if I should wave to them. Nah, nah, I should And I was just having these, like, just like these really whimsical little, like, thoughts. Um, Mid-event, like, all this pressure, and I was just so free to perform and, like, react and just enjoy the moment that I was having these, like, little thoughts like that. Um, you know, I remember even another thing. I was like, oh, I wonder if I should try this technique. No, no, you haven't practiced that. Don't, don't try that. <laughs> you know, just, like, little, yeah, like, crazy. fun little things and just, like, kind of, like, very aware of what was going on around me. And I could, like, hear other judges calling up the reps I could see my judge and well all the while doing exactly the pace that I needed to do but you know I was so free because I mentally visualized and I was in this like flow state and very comfortable although I was in a lot of pain it didn't really feel like it and um you know it's just able to just kind of like relax through this performance yeah it's pretty cool excellent man um are there any mantras that you live by or anything kind of guiding philosophies that you try and I know we kind of probably touched upon the um upon the process driven side of it is there anything that you kind of remind yourself of daily um you know i, I think that changes like I, I have this um this like a kind of a, a bulletin board goal board type thing and i haven't looked at it in a while but um occasionally i'll write stuff down like if, if there's a certain mindset i find is i've been slipping into that i don't like i'll sort of write something to combat that and i might read it lately i've been fine so it's just kind of been stagnant since about february but um one that i've been thinking of lately because i've been busy um you know a little stressed and just like trying to balance everything is is sort of reminding myself like you know, um, this is a Joshua Metcalf thing. And he's like, you have a choice. Like, these are your choices. You, you've chosen to try to balance work, you know, your relationship with your fiance and being a high level athlete. Like you made these choices, you know, if, if you want to quit Brent, there's the door. Like you can just hang up your sneakers or you can just walk out the door and quit, or you can just move to Tibet. Like you, you have these choices. So just like man up and do what you enjoy and you love this stuff. So like do it. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, I, that, I think that's something I've been reaffirming myself every now and again. Like, oh, man, I've got too much stuff to do. I've got too much stuff to do. I'm so busy. Like, Brent, like, you have a choice. You know, you can, you can walk out on all this. You, could, you can do whatever the hell you want. You know, you don't have to pay taxes. I mean, there'll be consequences. You'll have to pay them eventually. But you don't have to pay them. You know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to wait at a red light. You can run it. I mean, you'll probably get hit by a car. But you have that choice. So don't get frustrated by the red light. You, know, you could have walked. You know, all these foods, yeah. just like kind of this – like Brent, like why? Why are you complaining about this? You know, stop. And then you know, I get on it, and then and I'll even have like I have this little sticker on my um my uh my computer screen is just like a little it's like a little graph like a x y and then just like a line going up as in like profits going up. Yeah. And it's kind of just this like line to remind me like like that's where you that's that's what you want, Brent. You want to be you're moving up. Like what are you, what are you doing to make that happen? Just as from a from a work perspective, making money, but just from like a life perspective, like what are you doing to get, get up there? Like that, that's, that's what you like to do. Like, this is why that's kind of what drives you, right? Like you want to be better. So like, you know, just look at that and be like, well, you know, it's your choice. This is your line. Like just go. So it's a, lately that's been my little thing. Yeah. Do you have any daily routines or daily uh, rituals or anything you do? Um, you know, it's funny. I think I was talking briefly to someone about this yesterday and I couldn't put my finger on any, but I'm sure if someone followed me around, they'd be like, gosh, you do a lot of weird shit. <laughs> um, Cause now they're routines, right? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know, man. Um, I guess I, 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 I have a pretty good sleeping routine. So like um, before, you know, before bed, I, I definitely take a bit of time to just, you know, whether I do those breathing routines or maybe I'll just like hold a stretch for a while or I'll just like foam roll my quads or something just to kind of mellow out, um, close my eyes, complete darkness and just try to like, you know, it, it helps me sleep better. Um, yeah. just to like try to just think about nothing. I'll just, you know, just, just kind of roll around on the floor. Um, try and cool off, um, just to help me sleep. I'd say that's one of them. Um, and that just changes based on the day. Like, you know, if I feel like I need to stretch or I feel like I just need to breathe or, you know, if I just, sometimes I'll just lie on my back, not in the bed. I'm not really sure why I've decided that, but I'll lie on, I'll lie on my floor and just kind of like close my eyes and just like 
kind of like a pseudo float tank kind of thing. And then when I do go to bed, like, you know, I put in, I usually put in earplugs and it's a completely dark room. Um, I have a face mask if it's still light. Uh, you know, so just, just like folks, I, I have pretty good sleeps and I, I take kind of pride in that. And, you know, I take my time going to bed and I brush my teeth and wash my face and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. A bit of bone broth usually before I go to bed. Nice. Some, I mix in some spices and stuff that are like pretty soothing. So I have a pretty good, pretty good pre pre bedtime ritual because you know that's pretty important for yeah. yeah. And then on waking, is it just get up and go, or is there a kind of process there as well? Pretty much get up and go. Yeah, um, get up. Probably not that. It's something I kind of want to fix, but I get up. Um, and uh, go and I'll get a you know bit of water or something, go to the bathroom, and I'll end up checking my phone for a while, which I need to get rid of that habit, but it's just what I do right now. Check my emails, check to see if I have any messages, check to see if I have any texts, um, probably check Instagram, and then uh, <laughs> something I've been meaning to get away from, but I don't know if I will. And then, uh, yeah, I just have a little bite to eat and then usually go train. So just, yeah, it's pretty much get up and go. There's not like a, I don't know, what, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, I, yeah I'm. Um, I got sucked into the same trap for a while about the, uh, the checking the phone thing. Like mm. sometimes I'm coaching first thing, but yeah. but to be honest, um, I, I found that especially working with my clients and my athletes as well that you can't you can't just get rid of a habit. You have to change it for something else. Yeah. Um, so I go straight into meditation now. I go straight into a, a ten minute um, mm. calm meditation, and I just do that um, because. For some reason, having my phone in my hand, it's like, yeah, everything's fine. The world's the world's not broken, and then I can um, I just come in here, go through a meditation. If on days that I'm not coaching, um, otherwise I'm up, shower, cycle to the box, and, and start coaching. Yeah, I should go. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, and it's all about yeah. routine for me. Yeah, I might have to. Um, part of that too. I mean, I, I use it maybe as an excuse, but you know, our, our, we're, we're doing stuff 24 seven at our work. So part of me is like, Oh, I got to check my phone to see if there's, and yeah. sometimes there is, you know, I'll wake up and I'll miss something. And so the first thing I do is actually like, you know, deal with that issue. But yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a fine that. line. There's a fine line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like can't escape reality too much, but yeah, there's maybe, maybe, um, yeah, maybe getting up and I don't know. I feel like if I tried to meditate as soon as I wake up, I might just fall back to sleep too. Yeah, it's, it's having some sort of purpose. As soon as soon as like, okay, this is my structure. Like some people structure works really well. Um, otherwise, it's it's like just like some people, like most athletes, they'll get up and they'll do um, their they'll go through basically writing out like okay, this is what I'm going to achieve. These are the things I'm going to do today, and it's very process driven. First thing, it's reminding yourself like mm. why you're there, and it kind of it resets that. It, yeah, it's like that reset button. It's, yeah, it's yeah. this is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. These are my things. These are my four areas to work on, and this is these are the things I'm going to do today, which has all been planned out before. That's actually yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you the process off this one, and uh, we'll yeah, um, and what makes a great athlete? Hmm. It's a good question. It's something, uh, you know, I, I, um, I was in my home city of Lethbridge, I think over, I want to say Christmas time, maybe it was a different time. Anyway, I was there and I was trained. I got to train at a CrossFit gym with all these Lethbridge college volleyball players. That's uh, the college that I went to play volleyball with and got to give like a little speech. I didn't, hadn't planned too much. And you know, I was looking at these young guys and I was like, like, what can I say that would like potentially change? Cause you know, I remember being a high school or college kid and like I had speakers speak to me that had experienced success or whatever. And like, I don't remember too many of those speeches and I don't know if any of them really changed my course, my direction. I was like, man, what, what could I say? And then what does make a good athlete? I mean, I don't know, man. You know, I think, I think, people are going to do what people are going to do. And it's kind of like parenting. Like I've talked to a few people about parenting. It's something I want to be eventually. And, you know, it's like you kind of have to show them the way and then they just have to kind of find it themselves. You know, like, it, like I'll get people messaging me like, Hey man, like really into CrossFit, been doing it now for a couple months, want to make regionals. What do you <laughs> recommend? I'm just like, dude, like, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't tell that to you or like, or the better one yet is, Hey man, like they're older than me, they're like 30. Like, Hey man, I'm 30. How do you balance work and training? Like I can't seem to do it. And I'm like, like, I don't know. Like 
I'm, first of all, I'm not a life coach. I'm not your life coach. Um, <laughs> but it's like, like, what do you do in a day? Like, write down every single thing you've done in the last three days and anything that doesn't align with your goals, scrap it out tomorrow. Oh, I watched Netflix for three hours. I'm like, well, you know, get that out of there, <laughs> you know? And, and I'm not perfect either. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm better than a lot of people, but I, I still waste time. And, you know, I usually feel, the thing is I feel guilty for it and most people don't. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what makes it, what makes a great athlete, man. Um, you know, it really depends because I, I guess that's how you define a good athlete because I would, I would say there's great athletes out there that people know and they wear their jerseys. And they do everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like there, there definitely are. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, in people want to see like an overnight success story. So they, you know, they see some guy who's just like super chill and he's just talent. He's talent. He's talent. I can never be that good because he's talent. Um, I mean, there's probably a lot of things that he does that you don't see or used to do that got him there. But then there are guys that, you know, are literally, I don't know if talent's the right word, but they just are just good, man. Like they can just throw a ball. Yeah, better than anyone else can and it's just they can just do it you know they can do it now maybe it's because they put in the work but they don't do anything right now they they party they don't really get up early they just roll into training and you know like those guys that are just kind of messes on the nba and they're just like man how are you so good <laughs> um i don't know man i mean i guess if there's people watching and they want to be a good athlete you just got to be patient and you got to be thorough you got to work hard and there's, you know, there's, there's all these little tips you can find, but at the end of the day, if you do everything right for a very long period of time and you stay dedicated, you'll get better. That doesn't mean you're going to be the best, but you'll get a lot better. And eventually you might start catching people and being better than people that you never thought you're going to be better than. Um, that's, that's really the only takeaway, but it's like, you know, you don't, you know, if you're starting at 25 and you were never an athlete, you might never understand what it, what it means, the difference between exercising and training. And I've had that conversation. I'm like, well, what's the difference between exercising and training? And there is a difference. And I, I don't, I can't explain it to you. You know, like I can, I can look at someone and watch them and be like, you're exercising right now. You're not training. And like, but I can't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to them. There's just some, there's this mental change in like an awareness of what you're doing and like a cognitive ability to like learn from every single like repetition and every single training session, as opposed to just like, like working hard and sweating and like you might like the, the biomarkers might be the same. Like your heart rate got just as high um, and your breathing rate just got just as high as mine, actually probably higher um, than when mine does uh, comparatively to my perceived max. But I learned more from it mentally yeah. and I, and I, and the next time I'll adapt to that, to that. Um, and yeah. And there's even guys that compete at a high level that I think they still exercise too much. I don't think they train like at regionals and even the games. And that's why I think I can beat them is because, you know, but yeah, I mean, take away, if you want to be a good athlete, you know, find a good coach, work hard. Yeah. Just keep working hard and just, yeah. I mean, that's a good, the, the good, a good thing you can do is at the end of, at the end of a week, like write down everything you did. And if things aren't aligning to your goals, if you can switch those things that are aligning to your goals, then, you know, you're just spending your time better, you know, like instead of watching TV, maybe you go for like a, you know, some sort of active recovery or like a, a sauna or a, a float for an hour. Oh, I don't have time to float. It's like, would you watch TV? Yeah. Okay. Then you have time to float. Oh, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah nice. Bang on. I think that's, that's an awesome place to end. I think you kind of, you nailed it there. Um, being process driven and training mindfully, but that's, yeah. that's nice. Um, yeah. where can people find out a bit more about you and follow you on social media and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I am working on a, on a website. Um, that's just taking longer than I expected, but basically, uh, Instagram is pretty good, which is just at Fakowski. Um, I'm, I'm on Facebook as well. I have an athlete page, which is just um, at B Fakowski or just look up Brett Fakowski. There's only one yeah. of me. Um, yeah, usually there are those. I don't know. I'm on Twitter, but Twitter's lame. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely Instagram. I post, I post pretty good content there. And then, um, yeah, yeah, I'd say those two places, are the best place to find me drink Zevia, you know, wear Reebok shoes, all that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so committed, committed brand ambassador. Oh, no, they, they, uh, yeah, actually, Zevia is sweet. I've actually been enjoying one during the podcast. Good man, good man. <laughs> cool, um, thank you so much for jumping on the show. Is there anything you'd like to end with or anything you think you'd like to kind of give to everyone to, to finish? I don't know, man. I think that's pretty much it. Um, 
Yeah, I, I know talking to people here, like just you know, just um, I was talk like I was talking to someone who I know that's kind of in debt, and it's like, you know, he knows he knows what he needs to do. He just can't do it. You know, he know he knows he shouldn't do X, Y, Z, and that you know he knows how long it's going to take, and he, he knows these things. Like people are smart, but they're just like unwilling to like make changes. And it's the same thing with diet, like like they know and they feel a little guilty, but it's that like guilty pleasure. Like, ah, oh, yeah, like I don't deserve this, but oh, I'm going to eat it anyway. <laughs> um, like, you know, you know, people know, you know, only you know how hard you went in that training session. Like, you know, you don't need someone else to tell you that. You don't need a, a heart rate monitor to tell you that. Um, and so if you really want something like the people out there that are really like really get shit done, like they're just, they're the ones that like listen to that voice and they know. And they're like, yeah, okay, like, let's do it. And then you'll, you'll feel this greater sense of satisfaction having like committed to that voice that, cause you know, now that you're an adult, assuming you're an adult when you're watching this, um, you know, you know, when you didn't work hard, you know that you shouldn't be doing certain things and you know, you shouldn't be spending your money on, you know, stupid things like, and just like listen to that voice and just take control of your life. Right? Awesome. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Thank you so much for an excellent episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Mindset RX podcast. Very soon, I'll be back with both solo episodes and new interviews. But if you enjoy the show, please do me a favor and do the whole of the functional fitness community a favor and head over to uh, iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast and leave a five star review and some nice words too. You can find out more information about Mindset RX, our coaching, and the programs that we offer, as well as some more information about mindset in general at mindsetrx.com. So, mind set romeo x-ray delta.com or alternatively and probably preferably for you guys you can head to facebook and search for mindset for functional athletes and in there you'll find a free group or by doing so you'll find a free group where you can keep up to date with all the best mindset advice for functional athletes so i'll speak to you very soon Uh, 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 uh.